But on this occasion, at least we are in good company. Certainly within the modern era, no victimization of Native Americans has received so much attention, no doubt and because the underlying scandal has touched so many influential people. Nevertheless, we deeply appreciate the actions of, of this committee in, bring, in bringing this matter to light. Our tribe is governed, is governed by an elected council consisting of a chairman and four council members. None of the current council members were in office when Mr. Abramoff was hired in early 2001. Council Matsika took office in 2003. He had no direct contact with either Mr. Abramoff or Mr. Scanlon and very little knowledge of their activities. In fact, he became a vocal spokesperson against them. Council members LaBeouf, Burles Williams, and I took office in the past June. One of our council seats is currently vacant. This wholesale change in leadership was in large part as a result of the mess created by Abramoff and Mr. Scanlon. While an Indian country has seen so many con men throughout history, few of any were as skilled as Mr. Abramoff and Mr. Scanlon at creating and then preying on our insecurities. They preyed upon our political insecurities, they preyed upon our economic insecurities, and they preyed upon our insecurities about each other. Our political system is no more turbulent than any other. We too have cycles in leadership and influence, and it, and it occasionally turns partisan. The lobbyists came to our tribe during one of these transition periods, and they viewed this as an opportunity for exploitation. <laughs> to any decent person, vulnerability in, in others provides an opportunity to help. But to con men like a Mr. Abramoff and Mr. Scanlon, our vulnerability is simply provided an opportunity to steal. And they hit the jackpot with us. A Native American tribe with a fairly new casino in the midst of political transition and naive to the underworld of governmental affairs. They inserted themselves into our internal tribal politics, excluded and attempted to discredit those who questioned or opposed them, and deliberately caused paranoia on both sides by exaggerating threats. From, out, from inside and outside the tribe. They exaggerated political threats and they exaggerated economic threats. Then they exaggerated the ability to deal with these exaggerated threats. And in the midst of this, they incited political upheaval to provide cover for their scheme to steal millions of dollars. We are pleased to report that the political storm within the tribe has calmed and we are taking steps to recover the money that was stolen and to correct our system of checks and balances to ensure that this will never happen again. It is important to understand that the harm caused by Mr. Abramoff and Mr. Scanlon is much greater than the money they stole. Even though this amount is shockingly large, the score of victimization runs deeper, particularly because it has touched our leadership. Moreover, the misconduct of Mr. Abramoff and Mr. Scanlon has harmed all Native Americans in a way that deserves the, the particular attention of this committee. The lobbyists and actions have created a perception that there is something improper about officials working closely with Indian tribes. This stereotype threatens to chill communications with officials who can profoundly influence the well-being of tribes. Even worse, it unfairly shifts the blame from where it belongs to victims. Jack Abramoff is not a product of Indian country. On the contrary, he is the golden bar going bad of the American public political system. Our tribe and others were victimized when we attempted to fit into political into the American political system and we were led to believe that Mr. Abramoff was the gatekeeper. <coughs> We have begun the process of repairing the political damage to our tribe's reputation. We have met with several of our state and federal officials, and they seem genuinely committed to providing our tribe with the same access and the same channels of communication open to all individuals, businesses, and special interest groups. Nothing more, nothing less, and without favors or contributions. That is why the system should work, and that is certainly the way we would like to participate. There have been a lot of adjectives used to describe Mr. Abramoff and Mr. Scanlon. 
greedy and corrupt come to mind. But those are common terms often used to describe people who forfeit judgment for money. Abram and Scanlon's actions were hardly common. They set a, high new, a new high watermark for greed and corruption. I have read that Mr. Abramoff considers himself a religious man. If this is the case, then I do not understand the basis of his faith, and it is certainly different than ours. Most religions promote compassion and concern for others, and it is clear that Mr. Abramoff and Mr. Scanlon had no concern whatsoever for the welfare of our people. Your committee has done a great service for all Americans by exposing this sad affair. There are lessons here for everyone. I am grateful for the opportunity to address this committee on behalf of the Koshata tribe of Louisiana.